Welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm Dr. Janine Barry, naturopathic doctor, and today I am sharing how to reduce cellulite. So this is for the ladies. I've got tips, foods, exercises, and of course, what works. Now, stay tuned for the entire show as each week we do have our trivia section. So in our quiz section, this week we have our giveaway from our great sponsors at VitaTree Nutritionals. This is the VitaTree Veins and Circulation Formula. So I want you just to do your best in the quiz part of the show. Do your best to answer the questions. You do not need to answer them correctly. Just do your best. This is what you're playing for this week. And our lucky winner, who is randomly selected from all of our participants, will be sending out this to them. So yes, and congratulations to all our previous winners. If you are on TikTok, please, and on Instagram as well, please make sure that you are following Team Dr. J9 so that if you are our winner, you can be contacted. If you're new to my show, welcome in. This is the Dr. Janine Show. I am a naturopathic doctor and I share all things natural, how to deal with our health in a natural way, but of course the beauty aspects as well, which I know a lot of you love to watch the shows all about beauty. If you do have questions, questions and comments throughout the show, please make sure that you drop them in the comment section below. And I appreciate all the love that you give me throughout the show. So I see all of those likes already, 2.1K likes already on TikTok. Thank you to all of you and all my great followers. Thank you for double tapping that screen and sharing all those thumbs ups and all those things, no matter which platform you are watching today or listening to as well, because this is a podcast. Okay, so let's talk about cellulite. So cellulite, what is it? So the medical term is gynoid lipodystrophy. And this is the puckering of the skin. As we know, as women, you may have it because a huge percentage of us do. So 80 to 90% of women do have cellulite. And it only really occurs in about 10% of men. So I uh, have yet to see a man who has cellulite, uh, at least to the degree, of course, that women get it. Um, but you may be watching and maybe you are a man who does have cellulite. So this, of course, information is for you as well. And this has to do with the weakening of the connective tissue. And what happens, unfortunately, is because of those fibers. So our connective tissue is very different as compared to a man. So in women, our connective tissue is lined up in a way that it causes this dimpling effect. And I'm going to show you, I have a great demonstration that I actually created. Um, that I use on television to show that dimpling effect. So we'll get to that in just a second. But that is now because of that outpouching. So if we have gained some extra water weight, some extra fat, because that fiber is now pulling down, it, where that extra tissue is, that's where we get that dimpling effect. So, and the cellulite is most commonly found on certain parts of our bodies. So on the hips, it can be on, of course, the thighs, the backside, of course, the th of the thighs more readily, but it can be on the front as well, on the abdomen, on the buttocks and the breasts. Some people actually have it on the upper arms as well but not as common to have it there. And when we talk about how cellulite is formed, we can see in this diagram, of course, if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, is that we do have that healthy on the left, but now on the right, you see that cellulite formation and we get that puckering effect because of that fibrous tissue and those bands that are holding down those outpouchings of that extra and enlarged fat cells, as well as the, you know, it could be some fluid retention as well. Well, so that's why in today's episode, I'm sharing some of the tips to help to deal with getting that circulating and helping with that fluid retention as well. Now, there's different stages of cellulite. So here we see a grade zero. It's nice flat skin. We don't see any dimpling. Now, grade one, you can see the dimpling when pressure is applied to the area. Grade two is when you're standing but not lying down. So that is, it's already visible on its own. And grade three, of course, is dimpling both when standing and lying down. So that would be, you know, the most advanced stage of the cellulite. And of course, but there are, the good news is, is that there are ways to help it. Now, what are different causes? of cellulite. We know as women, certainly hormones play a big part of this. Poor circulation as well. So if that fluid and that blood and, you know, that extracellular fluid isn't properly pumped and the lymphatic fluid as well, then that could be part of it. As well as poor dietary choices. So certainly the more PUFAs and we'll talk about some, you know, 
healthier dietary choices for dealing with cellulite and fluid retention, but certainly, you know, the sugar is not the best as well. And unhealthy lifestyles, so if you have other things that you're doing that aren't so healthy, that could, and I won't name them, but that could be contributing to your toxicity as well as other accumulated toxins, of course, from our environment and, you know, what we're ingesting, inhaling on a daily basis. That's why I'm a big proponent of doing full body detoxes and doing those regularly, which I'll talk about as well. Of course, if you have poor lymphatic flow, if you're more sedentary, this can be a causative factor for cellulite as well. And weight gain. So if you've gained weight, that can be, you know, one of the causative factors. Now, lean women will also have cellulite so that could be part of the other causes as it's related to fluid re retention inactivity lack of that movement of that lymphatic fluid lack of sunlight so yes lack of sunlight we're going to talk about LED, red light therapy and how that can be really helpful to have that natural sunlight exposure as well as if you've got blue light toxicity that can be part of it as well and pregnancy of course being a hormonal but also you know more fluid retention can be another cause for cellulite so when we talk about red light exposure, so this is actually very therapeutic and studies have shown that it is very helpful. And what red light does, and of course I'm talking more so of the natural red light that we get from natural sunlight exposure, helps to increase our cellular metabolism and the energy production. And this happens of course when the light photons are absorbed by the mitochondrial cells. So we know that the mitochondria and longevity, these are energy producing cells in the body. This is really important that that light is hitting those mitochondria which we have a great picture of here and helping to ensure that that energy turnover and production is happening optimally now red light which is part of the spectrum of light that we get from the sun is not just about the uv so if you've missed my show about all of the hidden benefits of the sun, natural sunlight exposure please make sure that you check it out because that's a really important show that you know it's really important to get natural sunlight exposure as much as possible and it does help with cellulite as well now we also know that red light has been shown to increase our collagen production so yes as much as people say that the sunlight is bad we know that this actually helps our collagen so staying out of the sun can be detrimental in terms of the aging process when it's related of course to our cellulite but what red light does more specifically is it helps to stimulate the fibroblast production and we know that fibroblasts are the precursors to making our collagen so that's really important in helping to thicken the skin so when the thin with skin becomes very thin that can be you know another causative factor for seeing more of that cellulite happening but also to help to restore that elasticity in the skin. The red light helps to do that. And this is one of the things that having a little bit thicker skin and you know, decreasing some of that subcutaneous fat is going to, to help as well from that outpouching that's happening in terms of that cellulite production. Now we also know that red light helps with our elastin production, so helping to maintain that elasticity in our connective tissues and in our skin as well. And once it's damaged, then the problem is is that we have more of that photo aging thinning of the skin and then we start to see some loose and saggy skin which will only you know proliferate the look of that cellulite and that dimpling of the skin so red light therapy and the natural sunlight exposure will definitely help with retaining that healthy skin which of course will help the look of the cellulite and a study has been done so this was done on people that were having um, the treatment of lipolysis but at the same time the low level laser therapy at reducing the fat layer was indicative and this is really after just four minutes of laser exposure that 80 percent of the fat was released from the adipose cell so from the fat cells and after six minutes of laser exposure almost all of the fat was released from the fat cell the adipocyte so that's good news and that's why you know I'm a big proponent of that natural sunlight and doing it at certain times of the day which I'll talk about to really maximize that red light exposure so if you're just tuning in I am Dr. Janine it's nice to see you great to have you all here today I'm talking about how to reduce cellulite with tips foods exercises and what works and of course doing everything naturally now let's talk a little bit about exercise so the, for those of you who don't like to exercise and you're going no 
Yes, exercise is very helpful. We know for our overall good health and for our mental health, but also making sure that we are keeping our blood flowing. As we know, circulation is a big part of cellulite as well as our lymphatic system. So one of my favorite exercises for cellulite are lunges. So anytime you're working the quadrants Steps and your hamstrings, this is definitely going to help, especially for lower body strength. And when you bulk up your muscles, then you're pushing out, again, um, minimizing some of that, the look of the fat on those areas. And it's a great way to sort of smooth out. So doing lunges is fantastic. And I, depending on, you know, your level of fitness, starting very slowly, you don't have to go right down to the ground um, and touch your knee to the ground, but at the same time getting you know, effective repetition of lunges is fantastic. I prefer to do them actually. And once we have our new studio open, I'm going to show you all my favorite exercises, but I, I prefer to step back lunges. Uh, it's a little less threatening to your knee health. So that's one of the things that I, one of the tips that I do, um, even if I've done a class and they say, you know, forward lunges, I don't like that so much. Walking lunges, a little bit more challenging, but hey, if you, if you have the ability to do it and you're a steadfast, you know, person that works out, then definitely walking lunges with weights is fantastic for your cellulite as well. Now, another one is deadlifts. One of my absolute favorite exercises, it really helps to strengthen having proper form. So if you don't know how to do this properly, make sure that you get some instructions so that you're protecting your back. But deadlifts are great for the hamstrings, for the buttocks, and being able to tonify those muscles, the large muscles um, in the legs, and it's fantastic. So that's another one of my favorites. And I actually like doing with dumbbells and standing one leg deadlifts. So those are even much more challenging. It challenges your core muscles and your stability as well. I'd love to hear from everybody who works out out there. So please put it in the comments if you do these things um, as I love to. Uh, just let me know. Also, donkey kicks. So do you know what donkey kicks are? So we have a great video. So if you're seeing this on YouTube, you know what I'm talking about. So this is when you're on all fours. So you're on your knees and usually your upper arms um, facing down on the ground and then you're kicking your leg up behind you. So great for uh, cellulite as well and toning those muscles on your backside. HIIT training is known to really help not only with fat loss, weight loss, especially if you do it in a fasted state, you're going to burn more fat more quickly. So any type of high intensity training where you do bursts of really high intensity in between, you know, still continuing to exercise, one of the best things is burpees. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. Um, but they're the best thing. So yeah, if you love doing your burpees, then that is great for your cellulite and burning that overall body fat as well. So hello, hello to everybody who's here on Facebook. Samantha Lucas, nice to see you, Arletta as well. Um, okay, Samantha's asking a great question. Your knees always hurt with lunges. Is there a floor exercise? So it is more challenging um, on the floor to work the large muscle groups in the legs. Usually these are standing unless you've got some machinery to be able to do it. Um, so the donkey kicks would be, would be, you know, something that could help. And then lying down, there's also leg raises and things that you can do to strengthen um, and Pilates types of movements to strengthen the legs. So you can investigate that. But if you, if you are, you know, sort of new to lunging as you strengthen, you actually strengthen. So don't be afraid of lunges, but just try the step back ones, um, which I hope to demonstrate very soon, as I said, when I have the space to be able to show you how to do, you know, some of these things safely. Uh, so hello, hello, Francis. Hey, how are you? Francis, you love burpees as well, I see. <laughs> Not? Um, nice to see you. And Odessa, um, yes, it is possible to get rid of cellulite. So Rami, hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you all. Thank you for all the likes. Almost at 10K likes. That was fast. Thanks, guys. I love all that love. I love seeing all those hearts float up. So thank you so much for um, tuning in today. And Arletta is asking on Facebook, exercise tips for belly fat. Yes, absolutely. The HIIT training and burpees is one of the best things. A lot of weight training. So if you really want to burn off, you're, you can't spot reduce, but 
There are, I've got some little tips about spot redu reduction, not in today's episode. I've shared it in, in previous episodes using ice packs where you want to spot reduce. So um, maybe check that out. Maybe if we stay, stay in the show, I'm not sure if one of my team behind the scenes can find that exact link to where I talk about using the ice packs, the cold exposure for fat reduction. But that is something that I've talked about. Okay, let's move on. So some of the best foods to help to reduce cellulite. So number one, and this may seem counterintuitive, but drinking enough water. So when you're dehydrated, your body can actually hold on to, and you can have water retention. You can hold on to too much water. So drinking enough is really important as a natural way to make sure that you're flushing your fluids from your system, as well as low sugar diet. So the whole word, you know, carbohydrate, think about it, carbo, so carbon containing foods, hydrate, hydrate, water, water, water. So your body, if you're eating way too much sugar, your body's gonna hold on to excess water that it doesn't necessarily need because it's a carbohydrate. So you want to think about, you know, especially the unhealthy sugars, you want to focus on, you know, more of a lower carb, healthier diet and not having too much of that sugar, especially the refined sugars, as well as you've heard me talk a lot before about the PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, the seed oils. So you want to stay away from those. You want to focus more on the healthier fats. So things like coconut oil, um, sometimes a fish oil supplement that's high in the DHA, as well as grass fed ghee are some of my favorite favorites and you know making sure that you're getting enough now the specifically the fish oil is really important because it helps with our cellular membranes and when our cellular membranes are nice and fluid they allow for our nutrients to get into our cells and of course toxins to leave our cells so maximizing that you know fluid membrane structure and function is really part and part a, a parcel of having enough of that DHA which is really important getting enough protein is important you have to build your muscles and if if you're lacking in, in healthy muscle mass, you've got to get enough protein. So whether that's a vegetarian source or non-vegetarian source, definitely you want to be able to ensure you're getting enough protein to build strong, lean muscles. Now, flax seeds, flax seeds specifically for cellulite are great because what they do is they help to trap and decrease estrogen production, especially in women. So that's really something to consider they are a great fiber source i like to grind mine down so in terms of you know um you, and I, I like to freshly grind them myself. I don't like to purchase the ground flax seeds as much, um, making sure that they're fresh because they go rancid very quickly as they oxidize, as it's, you know, exposed to, to the air. So that's something that you want to make sure that if you're going to grind them. So I just do it in a little coffee bean grinder um, to make sure that they're freshly ground. As well as indole 3 carbonols. So I've talked about this in some of my shows about women's hormones. So in that group of indole 3 carbonols, foods which help to decrease again some of those bad estrogens kale so one of the superfoods we know brussels sprouts are in this group as well containing the i3c's cabbage broccoli bok choy as well are all in this group so really helpful at decreasing you know that less favorable estrogen breakdown um, into the estradiol which is not always our best friend and collagen so collagen is something that you can whether you are using it as a supplement you're adding it to your coffee which is very common that's the way that i love to do my collagen i use it in recipes as well uh, in my protein balls but also um, you know making a bone broth that is rich in natural collagen from the bones that you've used of course this is non-vegetarian uh, is a great way to help with cellulite as well so let's talk now a little bit about some of the topical treatments and procedures that you can do. Of course, these are the natural ones uh, for cellulite that have efficacy and they actually work. So one of them is caffeine and often in creams and potions and things that you may purchase for helping with the, the look of cellulite, you'll often see caffeine as one of the ingredients. So you can do coffee scrubs yourself and I've done this. Um, I like to mix 
you know, the coffee grounds with and make sure that it's not out after, you know, you've made your coffee. You want to have that full caffeine. So you, you want to use that full calf caffeine ground coffee and some coconut oil and rub that. It's messy. Um, rub that all over your legs or where you, you have concerned areas of cellulite and then go and sit in the sun and then, of course, wash it off with the hose or whatever. Um, or jump in the ocean. <laughs> it's up to you, but yeah, fantastic way to target that cellulite, as well as the essential oil of grapefruit. So one study actually showed that it helped with the breakdown of cellulite and prevented new fat cells from forming. So that's the concentrated essential oil, which you can usually purchase in a health food store. Uh, get a good quality when you're purchasing essential oils. Just make sure it's a high quality one and grapefruit oil. So you can rub that directly on the air areas I again would recommend you know um, depending on your skin sensitivity but lying in the sun at closer to sunset that's when you're going to get a lot of that red light and that's where you know you're going to find that benefit for the cellulite as well as of course massage and massage that if you can find someone who's trained in lymphatic drainage massage even better but you've got to move that fluid and you have to move and you know that ability to move that lymph fluid and that extracellular fluid by that direct stimulation is fantastic. Now another device that you can look into purchasing, and I just ordered mine online, and this is a fascia blaster. So I don't know if anybody has seen these before, but this is fantastic. And what this does is it's got rollers on it and it doesn't feel great. I'm going to tell you, it does not feel great, but I like to do this starting from just above my knees. And usually I, I wish I, I can't really demonstrate this, but what the heck? Um, so when I'm lying in bed is the, is the easiest way. Is this, it's awkward. I know it's okay, but that's, that's the Dr. Janine show. So. And you just roll, but you've got to you've got to apply a lot, and especially on your IT bands. This is great for you know if you work out and your your IT bands are, are quite tight, which for most people it is. But I start here because of course our lymph. You always want to move your lymph towards your heart as part of that drainage. So as I'm lying down and I'm rolling the backs of my legs, and I'll go up, you know, my backside as well. But fantastic for getting that circulation going. And you've got be aggressive enough. Don't be a wimp with this one. You want to be aggressive to actually move that lymph um, and it's called a fascia blaster for a reason so the fascia of course covers our muscles and it, it should be it should be slightly uncomfortable but do that you will love it so you can you can find these you know they're in some of those um, those stores where you buy sheets and and uh, clothing those home stores anyways so yeah so look for this I highly recommend it it's fantastic and I, I promise I'm gonna do videos like on my whole routine how I do this um, so that you have a good practical way and kind of a routine how to go through using this as well as dry brushing so I know a lot of you know about using you know a natural bristle brush um, I actually prefer this in the shower so it's not necessarily dry brushing at this point um, but a little bit of that moisture we know the healing aspects of water as well and those negative ions using you know a few drops of essential oil in the bottom of your shower and then doing the dry brushing always starting again and I'll do videos on this always starting from your extremities and moving towards your heart so that you are encouraging that lymph to flow towards the heart so that you have that proper circulation of the lymphatics which is great and another one is cupping so if you're not familiar with cupping this is and I'm not talking about going you know and seeing a practitioner I'm talking about just purchasing the cupping and I promise I'm going to do a future video on this very soon as well as to my routine how to do this but basically it's like a suction cup on your skin and they come in different sizes so depending on which area you're working on um, you suction it you use a bit of natural you know coconut oil or whatever it could be avocado oil I love as well great for the skin you put a bit of the oil on the skin and then you attach so you create some some suction in the cup you put it on the skin and then you move it and again moving always towards the heart and that's fantastic for the cellulite and you can s sort of spot treat different spots if you've got you know certain big dimples that you're seeing from your cellulite in certain areas you can definitely do that and and move it you know again towards the heart which is great 
Now, the other thing is doing detox. So you know that I'm a big proponent. If you've not watched before, I'm a big proponent of doing full body detox, doing this regularly. We've got to stay a step ahead of that toxicity. And because of the toxicity that we're exposed to in the water, in the environment, in our foods, you know, some that we can control, some that not so much. Uh, I really love doing a full body detox. So taking, you know, the herbal medicines internally, but also doing it as a bath. So especially, you know, if you're wanting to work on, on larger parts of your area of your body um, in terms of the cellulite, doing this in a full bath is fantastic. So the recipe for this, which we definitely are sharing here, you're going to mix an entire bottle of the full body detox as well as a third of a cup of Himalayan or sea salt, um, which is great. And you're going to mix that together in a little container, preferably in glass, but you know, if you don't have that, it's totally up to you. And then you're going to run your bath and make the water as hot as you can. I know it says warm water here, but I, I prefer it very hot to, to get, you know, circulation going. And then you're adding in a quarter cup of the mixture um, that you made above. So with the, the detox capsules that you've opened up and your salt, and you're going to take a quarter cup of that detox mi mixture, a half a cup of apple cider cider vinegar and your water and you're going to dump that in your bath and you're going to soak there and at least for 45 minutes as as it's dropping in temperature I like to add a little bit more uh, hot water to keep it as hot as possible that's just me you don't have to but um, and that's a great way to pull those toxins out and you will love the benefits of this so that's something that um, I definitely wanted to share with you now we do have a recipe for this as a foot bath as well but of course for cellulite if you're wanting to target at certain areas lying down in this um, is definitely gonna you will find more benefit from lying down in the de in the bath that way so I hope you try this and please let me know you know how it goes for you I think it's absolutely fantastic and I know a lot of women have reported back to me that they love the detox bath and the foot bath as well so if you're just tuning in I'm Dr. Janine today we're talking about how to reduce cellulite with tips foods exercises and what works and of course doing things all naturally we're streaming live on YouTube on Facebook on Instagram and TikTok as well remember stay on the line on Instagram and TikTok after the show because I will answer a few of your questions and make sure that you know you say hello so it's nice to see you all I want to say hello really quickly um, Phoenix is asking what goes into the bath water so I'll repeat it really quickly I don't know if we're putting it in um, if we're putting it in yeah okay there we go so you're going to open up a full bottle of the Vita Detox and then you're adding a third of a cup of the Himalayan um, or sea salt and I get a special salt from Germany and it's got you know special stuff in it I can share that in the live um, afterwards in the after show tomorrow I'll talk about that on TikTok and you combine that all together then you're gonna save that in a container you're not gonna use the whole thing so this is good for two or three baths and then you're gonna take a quarter of a cup of that mixture that you made and and adding in a half a cup of apple cider vinegar and that's going into your bath um, with hot hot water so I hope that helps you okay great so let's move on uh, to some herbal medicines for cellulite so these are some of the best and there are some studies behind the fact that these actually are very helpful uh, for cellulite so the first one is go to cola so this is interesting and in the wild elephants actually eat the leaves of this beautiful herbal medicine the go to cola and one study and I always say here's the joke that I always say on television well have you ever seen an elephant with cellulite no and do they have varicose veins no so this herbal medicine actually helps with um, varicose veins as well but elephants yeah they've got other issues going on with the way that their legs <laughs> <laughs> look but not cellulite and that is because it's helping with circulation so one study actually showed that the go to cola showed a shrinkage of fat cells on the butt and the thighs in the participants who were taking it and a decrease in the fibrous tissue between the fat cells. So go to cola has triterpenes, which help to promote the healthy connective tissue and stimulates the collagen production in the fibroblast, which we know is really helpful for having healthy collagen as it's related to the health of our skin cells. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly 
my oops, demonstration um, in terms of what we're talking about again in terms of the cellulite. So this is when we're young, we have great circulation, everything is nice and flat and smooth. But in women, because of our connective tissue, it differs as compared to the guys. And because our, our connective tissue is very fibrous and is holding down. So when we get that extra fluid accumulation and that extra you know, fat that we may have accumulated for whatever reason, hormonal reasons um, and toxicity reasons, we've got that extra fat and water retention. Now, because our fibrous tissue is holding it down, that's where we get that dimpling. So this is the fibers holding down and that's why we get the dimpling. So that's why the go to cola is really helpful because it helps to shrink the fat cells here, but also decreases that fibrous tissue between the fat cells. So that is a great aspect of that herbal medicine and one of the reasons why I love it so much. Another one is horse chestnut. So this helps to improve lymphatic flow and also decreases the fluid retention in the legs. Butcher's broom helps with the vein vasoconstriction and prevents blood from pooling in the vein. So that's another one that's really, really helpful. So of course, these you can find in combination. We'll talk about that in the after show as well and how to take this as well. And some very specific supplements for cellulite is what I'm sharing now. Next. Now, I love enzymes, and, and the one that I take is 14 different plant-based enzymes, very specifically containing bromelain and papain, which are our proteolytic enzymes, which means that they help to break down proteins, and they are fibrinolytic, fibrinolytic which means that they dissolve fibrinogen, which helps to break down cellulite. So that is, has an added benefit. Not only would it help with digestion, but actually taking this sort of off-label between meals, so not so much for digestion, but to target that cellulite, helps with pain and inflammation as well when you take it between meals. So usually about 45 minutes before you eat to ensure you have a, an empty stomach is a great time to take these specific enzyme. As well as collagen supplements are great for cellulite. We know that helping to stimulate our collagen production by taking uh, animal-based um, collagens. So stay tuned because this is one of the questions and a few, actually all the questions in today's quiz section are about collagen. So stay tuned for that. It's coming up in just a moment. As well as protein. So getting enough protein is really important to sometimes supplement as well with a high quality protein powder to ensure that you have that proper muscle strength and growth to help to, again, when you are sort of pushing a bulking up the muscles and I'm not talking about bulking up as a as a bodybuilder I'm talking about you know having nice muscular structure that will help to minimize the look of cellulite as well. And helping to support our body, especially against EMFs. So the non-native EMFs that are, of course, in our environment, those electromagnetic fields, you need to have enough magnesium. So magnesium, one of my favorite supplements, I took mine this morning, I do every day, to protect from all of that radiation that I have in my life, which a lot of you do as well. And of course, DHA. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier, helping to maintain healthy cell membranes is important. And most people have a DHA deficiency and and as humans, we are very reliant on having enough DHA for so many different, you know, biochemical reasons and hormonal functioning in our body. But to protect the health of our cell membranes is very important as well. So make sure that you are getting enough DHA. And you may need to go to fish oil if you're not eating a lot of, you know, fish in your diet. And, and I don't always recommend that. You've got to be really careful with fish in terms of toxicity um, reasons. We know heavy metals and things. Okay. Here we go. Nine tips to reduce cellulite naturally. So tip number one, exercise, of course. And anytime that you're moving, so any type of movement will help to move that lymphatic system, help with blood flow, which is so important. Rebounding, one of the best exercises. And anytime you're jumping, that will definitely help with moving that lymphatic. And of course, concentrating on the glutes. So, you know, doing the different exercises that I spoke about in today's episode so you can refer back to it. Of course, it lives on YouTube, so you can come back and watch the video again and take your notes. Um, anything that will work the, the glute muscles and the hamstrings is going to definitely help with the cellulite specifically in this area on, on the backs of the legs. Number two is using a percussion gun. So I don't know if everybody has one of these. 
This is fantastic. So I'm going to turn this on. And again, using this specifically on the backs of the legs is fantastic. And there's different head attachments that you can use. But again, you know, on, I don't know, is the camera guy going to get that? <laughs> can we see? So using this on the backs of the legs helps to move the limp because you can see that there's some, um, you know, vibration happening, but uh, also helps to get that lymphatic and that fluid retention going. And again, ideally always moving towards the heart to get that lymph to flow back towards the heart for that product lymphatic flow. As well as massage, we know is helpful as well. So this, you know, may be more affordable if you've got one of these, if you can't always, you know, have the luxury of going and having somebody give you a great massage, but using the percussion gun is fantastic. Tip number three is to use the coffee scrub. So, you know, uh, using a caffeine scrub and combining this. Now, you could combine in the grapefruit essential oil and a little bit of coconut oil. I promise I'm going to be doing demos on these, how to do this and to maximize the benefits that you can do your own spa treatments at home, going out into the sun, again, closer to as the sun is going down. So you get that red and the near infrared um, rays from the sun would be a great aspect of doing this as well. Tip number four is to use the herbal medicines that I spoke about so you can again flip back you know after we're done the program go to the YouTube video version of this and uh, I listed them out so go to cola is one of them um, one of my favorites for cellulite tip number five is to do a full body detox and doing this you know regularly also incorporating the full body bath with using those detoxification herbal medicines is very helpful as well and tip number six is mother nature's prescription you've got to connect with nature again so whether that's the natural sunlight very important grounding connecting with the earth so bringing those negative electrons into the body from the earth so a beach walk is one of the healthiest things that you can do at sunset for your cellulite it is fantastic Tip number seven is to use enzymes. So again, the plant-based digestive enzymes really help to target the breakdown of that cellulite. So using them between meals, so not right after a meal is helpful. And tip number eight, eating the foods that help to reduce cellulite. So again, I listed some of them. So flax seeds and grinding them yourself would be a great way to decrease some of that estrogen and that extra estrogen in the body, the indole three carbonyl foods as well, like kale is another great thing as well. But being careful with kale, of course, um, organic is always going to be better locally grown. There are some issues depending on where you get your kale. I talked about this. I'm, t I'm trying to think which episode I spoke about kale and there's some, some drawbacks with kale. So you just have to be a little bit careful. Sorry? That's okay. Healthy or not. Yes, foods, healthy or not. I do have that video on YouTube, so please check that out. And tip number nine, always, of course, I like to talk about the mind-body connection. So I think with cellulite, as much as we're focusing on, oh, get rid of it, it's, it's, it's not bad. It could be an indication that there's metabolically things that are not functioning as well in your mitochondrial, you know, and your connection to nature, your grounding, your sun exposure isn't, isn't optimized. So that's something that you want to focus on. But just having good body positivity. I mean, come on, ladies. Let's, let's just be positive. Let's love our bodies. There's nothing wrong, wrong with cellulite. At the same time, if we don't like the looks of it and it is showing us that metabolically we can do something a little bit better for ourselves, then that's why I share the information that I do. But we're all beautiful with cellulite or without. It doesn't really matter. But at the same time, if we want to just get healthier, then there are ways, of course, that I shared in today's episode, how to reduce cellulite with tips, foods, exercises, and of course, what works work. So that was fun. So I hope that you use those tips to your advantage. Yeah, we're not in bikini season yet, but here at least in in Canada, it, it's a few months away. We had a huge snowstorm here. And um, yeah, just reminiscing about the time that I was on a beach and hopefully getting there soon. So it is quiz time. Is everybody ready for this? So we are going to be now going through our quiz questions. Um, and thank you. I see Raina is here as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Raina is helping people out and sharing the videos. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And thanks for, oh my goodness, all the likes that are here. That is awesome. I appreciate all of that. Okay, it's quiz time. So remember, we're playing for this. You don't have to get your 
questions answered correctly, just do your best. All of our participants will be entered into a random selector. Um, so you just have to do your best and participate. So we're playing for this, the veins in circulation formulation. And here we go. Question number one. What is the main type of collagen in joints? Is it type 1, 2, or 3 collagen? What is the main type of collagen in the joints? Type 1, 2, or 3? Oh, and I'm not seeing my screen, guys, for, um, for this one. So I won't be able to see. Oh, that's better. Okay, what is the main type of collagen in the joints? Uh, Nyla, good try. Raina, good try. Donsal, hello. Nice to see you. Good try. Odessa, good job. Odessa 775, good job. Uh, Phoenix, good job. We've got some smart people here. Anybody else? The main type of collagen in joints? Nadia on Instagram has it. Good job. Um, JVVO1 on Instagram as well. Good job, good job. Anybody else? Madhuini, hey, how are you? Nice to see you, good job. Samara is here. Um, good job on Instagram. Anybody else? Anna? A Amma, nice try on Instagram. Nice try, good try, good try. Anybody else? Okay, moving right along. I talked a lot today. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it is type 2. Type 2 is the correct type of collagen in the joints. Okay, question number 2, true or false? You can get preformed collagen from vegetarian sources. So let's say you're looking to purchase um, a collagen supplement. You can get it from pre-formed collagen in vegetarian sources. True or false? Um, Reina, good job. Good, Nyla. Good try. Sam, good try. Phoenix, good try. Liz and Rock, hey, nice to see you. Good job, good job. Uh, Donsel, good try. Malbex, good. Um, Jamila, that's okay. As long as you try. Elsie Castles is here. Hey, nice to see you. A lot of the regulars are here. Good job, good job. Um, Donna, thank you for sharing your name. Uh, good try, good try. Uh, Gulna, good try. Madhawini, good job, good job. Anybody else? Uh, Arletta, good job on Facebook. And Kathy, good try, good try. Good tries on Instagram as well. So the the, it's false. So yeah, you can't get preformed collagen. So um, when you're looking to buy a collagen supplement, they're always animal based. Okay, question number three, name two causes of collagen loss. Two causes of loss of collagen, collagen loss. I want two, preferably please in the same answer. It makes it easier for us. Um, and Fari, Fariba, official, nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, TikTok has it, good job. Sammy Joe, good job. Melbourne, good job. Nice to see you, Melbourne. Good job, good job. Um, Nifa, good job. Uh, Don Saul, good job. Yes, Liz M. Rock, good job. Jamila, good job. Phoenix, good job. Ah, Raina, I like your answer. Yep, those would be my top two. Good job, good job. Um, Nadia on Instagram, good job. Uh, Samantha, good job. Anybody else? Loss of collagen. I got, yeah, Madhawini, good job as well. Mel Bex, good job. Um, Nyla, good job. Uh, Gulna, good job. Yeah, so most of the answers that I actually listed. Uh, yeah, Kathy, good job on YouTube as well. And Samantha, I think I mentioned. Yeah, good job. Okay, so aging can be a cause of collagen loss, smoking, 
alcohol, excessive alcohol, of course, uh, blue light toxicity, EMF exposure, lack of sleep, lack of sunlight, um, which I love that Raina caught that one, lack of sunlight. Uh, I know that somebody, people put sunlight UV, which can, of course, excessive UV can damage your collagen. But if you miss my show on collagen, if you miss my show on sunlight, please check both of those shows out. Very important. Um, if you're at all interested in maintaining a healthy life. Okay. Question number four, true or false? Collagen supplements can help leaky gut. This one's easy. True or false? Collagen supplements can help leaky gut. Uh, Jamila, that was quick. Good job. Melbourne, good job. Uh, Nyla, good job. Raina, good job. Deb Camp, good job. Donsel, good job. Jammy Joe, good. Liz M. Rock, nice answers, everyone. Anybody else? Arletta, good job. Um, Arletta had a good answer from, from the previous question as well. Good job. Um, Diva Organic has it as well. Good job. Nadia on Instagram, good job. Good job. Anybody else? Samar has it uh, as well on Instagram. Good job. Emma, good job. Um, Kathy, yes, good job. And it's true. Yes. So can when you're taking the right collagen supplement, it can be very helpful for leaky gut syndrome, uh, especially some of the specific amino acids. Okay, here we go. Question number five. Final question for today. Please make sure everyone is following Team Dr. J9 on Instagram and on TikTok. Very important because if you're you, if you are a lucky winner, we can't reach you if you're not following. Then uh, and make sure you're following me, of course, as well, that we can find you. Okay. Question number five. What is Dr. Janine's favorite type of collagen supplement? What is Dr. Janine's favorite type of collagen supplement? So there's different types. There's bovine, there's marine, there's chicken, collagen. What's my favorite type? The more specific you are, the better. Um, yes, Jamila, good job. Uh, Odessa, no. Uh, but good try. Sammy Joe, I, that is a good one. Conway Morgan, good job. Um, Nyla, good try. Melbert has it. Good job. Uh, yes, Arletta, good job. Sorry? Diva Organic and Nadia both have it as well. Good job. Wow. Nice. Um, Madawini, good job. Yes, Raina, good job. Melbert has it. Yes. Melbert has like ticking off all of the, yeah. Emma has it as well. Good job. Donsel, good job. There's one word I'm looking for. I didn't see it yet, but you'll you'll know as time as time goes on. Um, anybody else? Any last attempts? Last question. Uh, Kathy has it as well. Good job on YouTube. So yes, Elsie Castles. Good job. So my yes, my favorite type of collagen is a hydrolyzed grass-fed bovine collagen. What did it? Sorry? Oh, hydrolyzed. Don saw you got it. Good job. Yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Good job, everyone. So that was an awesome show. Remember to stay on the line on TikTok and on Instagram. I will come back to you in just a second as I close up the show. So today I talked all about how to reduce cellulite with tips, foods, exercises, and what works. Thank you so much. If you continue to have questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section below. Be sure to share this video as well and give me a big thumbs up and all the love, all the hearts, and all those likes that you can send me. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on those post notifications by clicking that bell. Everyone has a calling in life and one of mine is to educate you how to live life in line with nature. Thanks for watching.